close your eyes and find your breath. It's there all the time. The problem is our mind isn't there all the time, wandering off someplace else, exposed to the rain, exposed to the sun. You bring it back to the breath, you're giving it a home, a place where it can stay it's sheltered, or it has some walls and some roofs to protect it from everything that comes past. In other words, you want to be able to choose what you let into your mind and what you let your mind focus on. And also you want to be careful about what comes out of your mind. That's why walls and roofs are a good thing. They give you a sense of boundary and protection. You protect yourself from things outside, you protect people outside from things inside you. The problem is when the bad things outside, when the tiger is outside and the tigers inside the house get together, they can eat you up. So close the windows, close the doors for the time being, and you're right here inside the house. And cage the tigers. You're going to stay here with the breath, and you create a sense of well-being and ease. And as you find that the mind gets a greater sense of being at home in here, you begin to wonder why you're keeping the tigers in the home. So you can begin to starve them. The tigers stand primarily for your anger, but for your other emotions as well. And you thought you had to have some protection from the tigers because you didn't have a roof and you didn't have walls, but now you have those roofs and walls. So the tigers are unnecessary. You're much safer this way. So when someone comes to the door, you can check to see, is this a tiger or is this a human being? In other words, issues come in from outside, are they kind of the issues that will help you in developing the mind, or are they going to just get you worked up for no purpose at all? I mean, some things will get you worked up a little bit for a purpose, but those are pretty rare. And then you can decide whether to let that person in or not. This puts you more in control. You don't need all those tigers anymore. You've got a sense of well-being inside that doesn't depend on them. And you've got protection that doesn't depend on them either. You've got the protection of concentration. You've got the protection of your discernment. When the Buddha gives an analogy for the fortress, the mind is a fortress at the edge of a frontier, your discernment is the wall. And a special feature of the wall is it's covered with plaster so that the enemy can't get any footholds or handholds. In other words, when your discernment is good, things come in and they just slough right off. Something that would ordinarily give rise to greed, aversion, or delusion, you see it come in and you're not interested because you've seen through it. And so it can't climb the wall into the house. So with your house like this, you've got protection, and a protection that doesn't harm anybody at all. Your old protection, your tigers are harming not only you, but also the, the neighborhood. But now they're no longer needed. And you can let them starve. Don't feel sorry for the tigers. As even the Buddha said there was one thing that he advocated killing, and that was anger. And all the other emotions that go along with it. So let the tigers starve. You've got a much better way of protecting yourself now. As you get the mind firmly in concentration, imbued with, imbued with mindfulness and discernment, that's a much safer protection all around.